Hi, in this video, I will help you to understand uh, uh, what are the products on the market and how we benchmark our products. But uh, before uh, we will go uh, into the details, so what we did, we in fact gather all the information which is available on the market, about 22 uh, products coming from Samsung and how Samsung is communicating on QLED products. What is the most important uh, for Samsung uh, to talk about in terms of picture, uh, sound, uh, uh, features uh, and uh, uh, also functionalities and uh, energy levels. Uh, then you see that uh, there is the uh, same approach uh, for a Samsung in uh, standard uh, TV sets. Uh, this data comes from uh, German market as uh, we find this kind of information only on German markets. Uh, then uh, it is LG, uh, so you see that uh, LG is extremely complex uh, in terms of range and also functionalities as we have to be very cautious uh, how uh, what are the marketing names and what is the reality behind uh, as uh, they are really great in reinventing the wheel. So uh, you see that uh, in LG they have uh, a lot of uh, product uh, subfamilies OLED, QNED, uh, NanoCell, the new HD TV. Uh, all of them uh, are also complex, uh, so LG is even doing this kind of step-up charts uh, to help uh, trade or shop assistants to understand the range uh, better and be focused on key functionalities. Sony has slightly different approach uh, and uh, slightly uh, simpler approach, sometimes too simple. Uh, then we come also to Philips. Uh, you see that uh, Philips is mostly focused on OLED uh, communication, but uh, is coming with some uh, step up or more premium products like mini LED products uh, uh, last year and uh, 100 Hz products this year, which was not the case two years ago. Uh, and uh, Philips is still keeping uh, this uh, HTML5 uh, a smart TV store for more entry products. Then there is also Hisense, uh, which uh, published this kind of information. Uh, then Hisense has a lot of uh, strange names uh, for products, but uh, one point which is worth to mention is that Hisense in Europe is using Vida, so it's not using Android or Google TV, which is only uh, possible or available in US. So to go deeper, what we did for you, we also did uh, kind of uh, comparison how product names are changing year by year for Samsung, LG, Sony, Philips, Hisense and TCL. Why we did it? Because uh, what is quite logical for Samsung and all of you uh, know that uh, for QLED products, uh, letter at the end indicates the year. So A was last year, B is this year. Then for LG we enter into the mess because uh, OLED is using number like uh, C1, C2, so C1 one last year to this year it was X in 2020. But when you move to mini LED products, so they use the letter and the letter is far, far to the end. So why the letter is far to the end? Because uh, people mainly look on QNET or Nano 1991 and then nobody is looking into the details if the product is really this year product or previous year product. Sony uh, changed, uh, has changed uh, the logic uh, in 2021 and aligned the logic with US. So it is also letter at the end and it's uh, quite logical to recognize. Then Philips is number at the end and is the same since many, many years. Hisense is another mess because uh, it's for us sometimes difficult to understand what was the naming into 20. In 21 we know that it was G letter and 2022 is H letter. And then in TCL you see that we use the number to indicate the number is in the middle. So I hope it will help you to really understand uh, what are the products and what are the years. Here I also update for you this very famous chart. So then by taking 65 inch uh, as a basis uh, from the market, I have to remake this chart and then uh, to really identify me LED products, solid products and uh, also uh, standard products. You see that uh, 
The segmentation I used here is split to streaming, so 65 up to 700 more or less euro. Then best value product, so 700 to 1400. And then performance, which is 1400 to 2000. And above 2000, we call it high end the best uh, products. And uh, I use uh, this uh, more pricing for 2022 products, which just uh, most of them pop up on the market to highlight how we position and what are the functionalities, especially in terms of dimming zones and also in terms of uh, uh, other features. Xiaomi is still on the market with last year products. Uh, we have a lot of announcements that Q2 range uh, is uh, coming but uh, still it is announcement and we don't see this product uh, on the market uh, available so let's go deeper and uh, look on c93 how we compare this product uh, by prices prices you see are taken from the market from the online usually from average from france from germany also from italy and uh, then you see that uh, C93 we compare with QN91. Then uh, Sony X95 should be proper comparison, but Sony is extremely expensive. Then uh, LG QNET91, I'm not sure is the proper comparison, but anyway, it is the highest UHD mini LED product from 2022 range. Then Philips PML95 and uh, Hisense U9. Hisense U9 is purely virtual product as is uh, not available and not visible on the market. What is key here for you to understand is that the product is made by peak brightness and number of dimming zones and the panel technology. In TCL we have the best combination in terms of V panel, which is very high static contrast in terms of peak brightness and also in terms of number of dimming zones. Then Samsung has less zones, uh, has uh, similar or slightly lower brightness. And uh, then uh, when we look on Sony, Sony has uh, much less zones and uh, then lower brightness. Then LG is coming with IPS panel. IPS panel usually is a disaster panel, which is unable to deliver blacks. This is good panel for monitors, but it's never good panels for TV set and for HDR performance. Then uh, you see also the same IPS uh, uh, IPS story you will see in uh, other products coming from LG. And then other brands like Philips and Hisense are with VA panels. In terms of picture processing, uh, it is quite similar in terms of clarity, upscaling, deep learning. Uh, in products. In terms of HDR, you see that uh, uh, we also talk here about high-end uh, products. Some brands come with Dolby Vision IQ, some of them uh, are not yet available. And then Google TV, Tizen uh, in Samsung, Google TV in Sony, uh, WebOS in LG, Philips is still with Android TV, and uh, Hisense is with uh, VDA. Uh, then uh, how we can compare and go better, go deeper uh, between C93 from TCL and Samsung. Uh, you see that key issue with Samsung, what we'll also show you on other videos, is uh, visible blooming. Uh, so you really see it in uh, when you have something bright on a dark area. There is also no Dolby Vision in Samsung and uh, then no built-in uh, sandbar. Sony is... Uh, having uh, the same issue as uh, fault blooming and then on another side is extremely expensive. LG, I, I already talked, is just uh, IPS panel and uh, then the panel which is unable to deliver performance uh, at this uh, price point. So uh, gray blacks are uh, gray. And then number of dimming zones and peak brightness is very low for this uh, price point. Philips, uh, you see also, uh, the product on the paper might be interesting, but on another side, no AirPlay 2. Uh, also, last year products were facing inverse halo effect, so it was the first discovered by media. This year, we don't know uh, how this product uh, performs. High sense, difficult to say, almost not existent product. And I think uh, soon you will have uh, a lot of uh, press tests of uh, C93, so you will see that press will also recognize this product as 
quite uh, interesting. Then we move to C83 and uh, then we go uh, one step to the mid-market of mini-LED products. You see that we compare C83 with Samsung QN85B, with Sony X90, with LG QNet86, there is no Philips uh, product in this segment, and Hisense U8H. And then what are the differences? So on the one side TCL is 1500 nits uh, peak brightness, uh, almost 300 dimming zones. Samsung is same brightness, more and more zones, but IPS panel. So then immediately you see that uh, there is no dynamic range uh, coming uh, from the screen. Sony is with, you see, unbelievable 60 dimming zones. So almost, uh, you see, uh, you don't see this zones uh, working uh, on the screen. LG is with 180 zones and IPS panel. So generally also uh, no effect uh, on the dynamic range, which you see is uh, very low. And uh, then uh, Hisense is also coming with IPS uh, panel. Then, in terms of other functionalities, it's quite similar as in C93, but when we go into more details, you see, generally, Samsung IPS panel, what I said, very slow, full RI local dimming with uh, visible motion trail. Then, no Dolby Vision, uh, I think also no 144 Hz in this product. Sony, it's I think at this price point is a joke to do the product with uh, 60 dimming zones. LG with, uh, in, if I'm correct, 180 zones and then IPS panels also. Uh, it's not a really product uh, which uh, should be sold at this price. And uh, Hisense, you see IPS 160, so can be compared with LG, but no AirPlay 2, no Google TV. No Android TV, just their own uh, platform. Then let's move to C73. And here we have 55 inch, so we compare this product with uh, uh, Samsung uh, Q70B, with Sony X85K, and also with LG QNet82, and uh, Philips uh, PUS8807 and Hisense uh, U7HQ. So the product is global dimming product with uh, something like 350 nits uh, peak brightness. Uh, you see that Samsung has uh, higher brightness, but with global dimming, generally you won't uh, perceive this uh, high brightness because it is according to uh, the panel contrast uh, ratio. Uh, then uh, Sony is uh, also higher, but with VA panel and uh, same case, so then you won't really see the difference. Then we come to LG IPS QNET, six dimming zones. Why six dimming zones? Just uh, to be able to show that something is black on another side of the panel if uh, another side is bright. But uh, if uh, uh, the backlight is on, the screen is gray. Then uh, you see Hisense, also IPS panel, 32 zones. So I don't think that these zones help in anything, just are on the paper, but don't provide any picture performance. In terms of functionalities, you see that TCL is, uh, I think, the only product with Dolby Vision IQ and with 144 Hz for gaming. Then uh, when we go deeper to the C73, uh, you see uh, versus Samsung, it's clear, uh, no Atmos, no Dolby Vision, no 144 Hz. Versus Sony, no Dolby Vision IQ, no 144 Hz. Versus LG, uh, it's, uh, I think, very clear. LG is IPS panel, which is not able to deliver dynamic range. No Dolby Vision IQ, uh, no Dolby Vision, and also no Dolby Atmos. Then uh, we come uh, to Philips. Philips is Android TV, no AirPlay 2. And Hisense, you see a very long list of reasons why this uh, product is good on the paper, but I don't think is good uh, side by side uh, if we compare it with TCLC 73. The next point is uh, for us uh, C63. So here we talk about uh, Samsung Q60B, we talk about Sony X80K, we talk about LG Nano 82 and then uh, Philips uh, 
Pus uh, 8507. I think this product is not yet available widely on European market. And the Hisense E7HQ, so you see, you had U, you have E, uh, one letter difference, but uh, also a big difference in terms of performance. But uh, in this year we stick to HVA panels with very high a native contrast and also we stick to QLED uh, product. Uh, this segment is 60 Hz segment. All products uh, come with uh, motion interpolation up to 60 Hz. Then in TCL again we deliver the broadest uh, uh, list of uh, HDR formats in the, the uh, TV set. And then when we go deeper and try to compare, so you see uh, that in many areas uh, we are leading by having Dolby Vision or by having uh, Dolby Atmos. Even in case of Philips, which is expensive, there is no even white color gamut. And LG, Hisense, you see IPS panel. LG is having in Nano 82 six zones. Dimming zones in uh, Nano 76, there are no dimming zones, but anyway, with six, without six, it doesn't change a lot. And last point I want to say about uh, benchmark is 98C735. So this product is extremely difficult and uh, complex uh, to compare. Uh, why? Because uh, you see that generally there is no real competition on the market. We are more competing with short row uh, projectors uh, than with other 98 inch products. Our Sa uh, Samsung 90HQ and 100 is uh, extremely expensive because Samsung is trying uh, to do the product with 5000 needs, uh, thousands of dimming zones and uh, then uh, I think uh, consuming also a lot of energy. Then LG is uh, trying to go with 97 inch uh, OLED, which is also enormously expensive and is also dark as all OLEDs are dark, but this we will talk more about in the picture performance uh, training. And then uh, what about 98 C735? So it's bright, 700 nits in peak, uh, I think uh, 400 nits around uh, uh, in average, so it's a lot and uh, sufficient for your bright room. 192 dimming zones uh, with VA panel, so ideal product uh, for your house and uh, a large living room. Short row beamer, if you want to have performance, you have to hide your windows, so then you cannot use it as just daily TV. And then usually you need also the screen. And then Samsung and LG, I think, are significantly expensive products and rather uh, products uh, for real geeks.